Well, I got to be in the church. Amen. Man, good stuff. All the way through. Thank everybody for all your hard work getting that together. Man, I love that song. That's one of my favorites right now. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And that's about what I'm about to do. I'm going to tell you about my Jesus, and she asked me to. Amen. So we, we started some, something last week, and we, we started talking about this fun thing called social media and uh, how it's, a, it's really changed the whole landscape uh, of the way things are doing, the way things are being done, right? And you may not be a social media person. You may not be involved in it. May not be in, you may not have an Instagram account or a Facebook account or a Snapchat. But we learned last week when we had everybody raise their hand, if you're one of those that don't have it, you're very into the minority. Most people have it. And what's happening, a lot of studies are being done because, it's, like I told you last week, Facebook turns 20 years old next week. That's how long it's been around. It's just been around that long. And what's happened is the whole social media platform has really changed the way we do relationships, it changes how we do friendship, it changes about intimacy, it changes uh, all kinds of things, how we feel about contentment, all those things, right? Uh, and uh, being authentic. So what happens is, since it's changed that whole platform, it sort of changed the way people look at things. And what it does is it's sort of taken us away from what God says to do things and how the things around us are, are, are shaping. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to walk through this and talk about several things. So last week, we talked about intimacy and how important the Bible says to love one another and how it's important that we do that. And the power of that, of loving of each other, is being present, right? So it's not so much grabbing your phone and texting somebody. It's actually being present. It's actually calling somebody, using the phone. And it's okay to text. I'm not going, I'm, do not write me, do not you know, give me bad letters or any of that stuff uh, because I, I do believe in social media. <clears throat> we believe in social, we use social media here at the church to help do marketing. <clears throat> Where I work at the library, we use social media because it's a big thing. So I'm, I'm okay with social media. Don't think I'm one of those preachers that are up here just saying bad things, you know. I'm not that person, right? I, I believe it can be used in a powerful way. I'm just saying it's changing things and we need to look at that make sure we're as a church, doing what you're, we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Does everybody understand me? If we do, say amen. amen. Okay, I just want to make sure, right? But it has, it has changed a lot. So we talked about intimacy last week. And we talked about being the power of being present. And or not just texting somebody. And just calling them. Picking up on the phone and calling them. It was so interesting last week. Uh, of this past week, I just preached that. And... Uh, <clears throat> Something happened. I can't even remember what happened. I put out a post about something. Oh, Noah, our son, who lives in Oklahoma City, they had tornadoes everywhere, like we did just a couple of days ago. And I had sent out a text to my board, right, the church board, and I said, hey, y'all pray for Noah. He's had to take shelter at their church because they have a, a tornado bunker there at their church. And, man, I, I wasn't even thinking about it. All of a sudden, my phone started ringing. Right? So they said, yeah, we knew we better call you and not text you. We're praying for you. So it, it was kind of funny, I guess, to me it was. But I appreciate the calls that I did get. But it, it's amazing how that's changed. So we're going to talk about that. Right? And next week we're going to sort of talk about being authentic because the one thing that social media has done is sort of took that away. We don't have to be authentic anymore. We can present ourselves in a way that's not authentic, right? We can present ourselves ever how we want to, and on social media, that's all they see. They see the highlight reel. They don't see the behind the scenes. They just all they're seeing is what you're showing them. So we don't have to be authentic. It's not something we have to do anymore. When the Bible teaches us to be authentic in our relationship, the, that, the social media doesn't do that, right? So we're going to look at several of those things. So today, I, I got to thinking praying, asking God to guide us into the place that He needs us to go today. So today we're going to talk about this thing called contentment. In the scripture you heard it read a while ago, you know, it's, it, it, it's interesting, right? It's interesting how we've allowed social media to so influence our life that when we, when we get on social media, and we start looking at what's happening in the lives of other people, we have this bad tendency to compare our life with their life. 
And so what happens is, since you're only getting that highlight reel, you're not getting the behind the scenes, you know that, right? You're only getting the highlight reel. So because you only see that, that one part of it, that's what most of these studies that are being done about social media is saying that we never in history, never in history, have we had so much but still want more. Can I say that again? Because here's the issue, and you may not want to admit it, never in history have we had so much. And what do you want? More. You see what other people have, and what do you want? You want more. Never. All the studies that are being done are saying that we are at a place in history where we are wanting more than we've ever wanted, to more, ever wanted before, but we still have more than we've never had before. It's just so, it's so amazing because we're driven by this thing of trying to compare our life with other people. And it's not good. It's not, it was interesting. I was, I, when I was getting ready for this, I got on a lot of podcasts and I read a few books because I wanted to be ready. And one of these podcasts, it was so funny. There were these two ladies and they were doing these interviews and they were in the same room and one of them said, you know, looking at the other girl, because they'd worked through this in their relationship, one of the girls said, you know, I used to hate you. Right? I'm, I, I saw that you were, you were married and you had kids, but you were at work and you were succeeding and you were doing great things. She said, I just hated you because I'm at home. And the other lady looked at her and said, well, you know what? I hated you because I'm at work and you're at home with your kids just having a great time. And it's just amazing that they hated each other because they saw each other on social media doing what they wanted to do. And the other one hated them. I'm like, wow, well, that's what he does. See, that's what happens when we start comparing our lives with other people's lives. So we have to be careful, right? We have to be careful when we go there, right? So, you know, like, you may, I don't know if you ever do this, and I know you do, you just want to admit it in public, right? So you're sitting at home, you're flipping through your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever, and then all of a sudden you're at home eating a lean cuisine, amen? eating your frozen meal, and your friend is in a fancy restaurant. You're like, man, that's just sorry. I'm at home eating a frozen meal. And, then, can, and I get an amen. Anybody ever been there? Come on, let's, can we just be honest? I'm going to be transparent with you, so I need you to be transparent with me. Somebody say, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Don't you know you're sitting there, you know, and you're strapped with cash, and some of your friends, man, they're having fun, going on vacations and having a good time, and you're looking at them, you're like, man, I wish I was there. And yet, how many have ever done that? Can I get an amen? amen? And it's easy for that to set in because you're sitting at home barely making it, trying to do your best to pay what you need to pay, right? And you can't be. It's like, man, their life is so good, going good. You know, it's like, I don't know, I know y'all don't do this, right? I used to, but I've, I've set myself free from this, right? So you can look at your other friends and you're counting how many followers they have compared to how many followers you have. Or you look at how many likes they're getting, right? You're like, all right, and I'm, I did my post last week. All week long, you know what I was doing? I'm trying to see how many likes I got. I got to 99, so if somebody can get on there and give me one more like, I may cross into the 100. Can I get an amen? amen. It's funny how we do that. You know, I'm watching another video. He's got like 10,000 likes. I'm like, what's the deal here? What can I get? It's amazing how we do that. See, that's what social media does. Right? It puts us in this place. Matter of fact, there was this research. These, these researchers went into two, two different colleges. And they were sort of watching these students and how they reacted to certain things. So what they did is they grabbed a bunch of the students and they had them get on Instagram and Facebook for 30 minutes. Right? Just get on Instagram or get on Facebook and just stay there for 30 minutes. So all these kids, that's all they had to do for 30 minutes. They got on Facebook. They was watching, reading what their friends were doing. After they were finished, they questioned them. One third of them, right? One third of them, when they got off of it, felt depressed. They felt envious. Think about that. So what are they doing? They're watching what their friends are doing, watching what's going on around them. And then at the end of that, after just 30 minutes, they are envious about the other things that are going on in other people's lives. So it's interesting to me, right? And I know you may not deal with this. It may not be something, something you struggle with. But let me just give you an example. So I got to thinking about this. If you could bust this into three areas. I mean, this doesn't have to be social media. Look up here. It doesn't have to be social media, right? This particular issue is not just a social media issue. It's a life issue. 
You don't have to be on social media to look around you and see what other people are doing and get envious and get jealous and get very envious. And we know what the Bible, and we're going to learn what the Bible says about that. So yeah, you may say, well, I'm not a social media person, so I'm out of this. No, you're not, because you live life, and life can easily get you into this spot. So I look this into three areas, right? Really quick, here's what they are. I think first of all, there's the material, financial, discontentment. People feel discontented. They look at their car, and then they see on Facebook, or they hear about their best friend, maybe some family member gets another car, and their car is way better, right? And they get jealous because, man, I've seen a post, and it's hard to be happy about your car that barely gets down the road, and you're trying your best to keep it, keep four wheels moving, and your other friends and all of them are having really nice cars, and we, we have to be careful because we can get very discontented quickly. You can do that with a house. You get online, people are adding to their houses, building to their houses, adding a room, you know, redoing their, and you see all that happening, and you look around at your house, and you're just barely, barely able to do different, you're just putting spot paint on the wall because you can't even afford to paint them, and all of a sudden, you can get very envious just looking at the people around you. This makes sense. If you can do that with, with your vacation, you know, we do that, we see other people, we get very discontented. So there's this sort of, if you want to call it, a material financial discontentment. You get very <coughs> discontented really quick by just looking around you. It can be that relational type discontentment. You know, you watch, you ever do this, you look down there and there's somebody's having a party and you didn't get invited. Well, that just ain't right, Miss Cindy. I'm sitting at home by myself, and everybody else is getting invited to this party, and I thought I was part of the group. I thought I was one of them. I guess I'm not. I'm not part of that party, so I didn't get invited. And so what happens? That envy, that discontentment says in. It can happen. And let me tell you what. We're going to show you how the devil uses that in just a second. It can happen. You can look around and see everybody having fun, everybody having followers, and before you know it, you can be discontented. Man, you can do this. It, uh, another area is just circumstances, right? You know, you're looking at your life and you're thinking, this point in my life, I should... You, you look at other people your age, people that you graduated high school from, and then they have, they have moved on, they've got jobs, and you look at your life and you're not as where they're at in your life. And you get frustrated and jealous because you're not there. Let me tell you, this is the one I, this is the one I struggle with the most. I told you I was going to be transparent. Is that okay? Are you okay? I, I struggle with this. Because see, for me, on Saturday and Sunday, you see, like, I work. I know we're not supposed to work on Sunday, but your preacher works on Sunday. A lot of my work is done on Saturday and Sunday because I work through the week at my other job. So we're working, man. We're visiting. We're doing all kinds of things. But I'm looking, I quit looking at Facebook on the weekend because what I'm doing, I'm looking at you, man. You're at the lake. You're at the football game. And I'm like, you dog. I'm having to work while you're having all that fun. So I finally get to the point and say, you know what? I'm going to keep doing the Lord's work. You keep doing the devil's work. <laughs> I'm, I'm winning people for Jesus. What are you doing? <coughs> See how easy that can happen, Jody? I can just say, hey, what's up with this, right? Circumstances. Man, they can put you there so, so quickly. And I think what's happening in this world, when you think about it, <clears throat> trying to stay content. I've heard this before. Life is 90% of what happens to you, and it, wait a minute, life is 10% of what happens to you, and 90% of how you respond. <clears throat> but I think we flip that, and what we do. When we feel like that life is 90% of what happens to us, and the 10 resp we respond at 10% because we're just too wore out. Now look what Paul says. You just heard this read. Here's what Paul says. Apostle Paul now, when he wrote what Johnny read in Philippians, when he wrote it, he was in prison. Think about this. Chained to the guard 24 hours a day. Right? I want you to picture a man sitting at a table writing a letter to the church at Philippians. 
at, the, at Philippi. He's writing this, this letter. And he's writing this letter to them, to them to tell him. He's in a prison, being chained to guard 24 hours a day. And here's what he said. He said, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it's like to have plenty. Then he says, I've learned this. What? Everybody say that loud. I've learned what? I've learned the secret of being content in every, any and every situation. Hey, don't y'all want to know how to be content in any situation? He's speaking to tell you. Look what he said. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or, or in want. You want to know what the secret is? I can do all things through, say it with me, I can do all things through what? Yeah. Through Him and who's Him? Yeah. Christ. I can do all things through Jesus. How many of y'all believe that? Okay, i got to ask you, how many believe God's Word? Raise your hand. How many believe it applies to you personally? Raise your hand. Be brave, be bold, be courageous. Now, this is my life. This is my life song. If you go on my, if you email me, if you ever email me and I email you back, this I don't care if I'm at work in a public place. I'm, this is on my, this is on my, my underneath my, my signature at the bottom because it's my life song. It's the life first that I use. I can do all things through Christ who gives me this strength. No matter what comes against me, it doesn't matter. Because I can do it through Christ that gives me the strength. How many believe that today? Yes. <clears throat> so here it is. You're always, I don't care who you are, what you've done, where you've been, you're always going to battle with discontent until you let Christ until you let Christ be all that you need. Look up here. You'll always battle with discontent until you get to the place in your life where you realize that Jesus is all that you need. Right? I've learned this. It has been tough. I'll be 60 years old this year. Every time I tell my myself, it freaks me out just a little bit. <laughs> 60 years old. It's taken me a little while to, to learn this. I'm telling you, it's not something I just learned here. You know, when I was 18, 19 years old, but I've learned to be content with wherever I'm at. Because I know that God's presence is with me no matter what. Because I know I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. I know He's there. So He's always my presence. He's always my strength. He's always my comforter. He's always there. No matter what, that's who Jesus is. So, I mean, if nobody is with me, I can look around and I can know for a fact then I'm not alone because Jesus is right, right next to me. Man, I can get the bad news. Man, if I get the bad news, say my health is bad, something's wrong, you're going to have to do this, I can think, man, I'm by myself, and every time I turn around, I can look right beside me, and I know that there's Jesus holding my hand because I'm not alone. I may think I'm losing everything I have, and I've been to that place where it feels like there's more money than more month than money. But I'm telling you, every time Renee and I looked around, it felt like we didn't have nothing. I'm telling you, church, when I looked around, Jesus was right beside me. He never left me. And you know what? I was able to move through those things in my life because I knew that Jesus, I knew I could do anything. No matter how tough it was, I learned to be content in the sufferings and the hard times because I knew, church, that Jesus was beside me. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's think about this. I hear you talking, right? I want to give you two points. Everybody say amen. I ain't even got to my sermon yet, and you're going to give it to me. I'm going to give you two. Here they are. Number one, through Christ, here's what you got to do. You're going to have to kill the comparisons. Look up here, me. Look up here. I'm telling you, the only way you can be content in all things, are you listening? The only way you can be content is you've got to murder and kill that, that part in your life that when you're comparing yourself to other people, quit. Quit doing that. Quit looking at other lives. You look at your life and you say, man, 
I am glad what God has given me. Quit worrying about what God's given other people. Just be happy and content that you got what you got. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hear what the scripture says. This is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. It's up on the screen. Paul wrote this. He says, we do not dare. We don't even come close. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Let me give you an illustration. I'm going to try my best. I know my sister's here. I didn't know she was going to be here, and I hate to tell this story. But at least she's here to hear it. All right. So when we were younger, I got a, I got a neat little thing. Man. I got a mini, mini 1250. Everybody say man. Amen. Woo! Anybody ever heard of this? Yes, I have. Man, I, you did. Wow, that's awesome. I got a mini 1250, right? My mom and dad bought it for me, and then for a while I was the king of the plot. I mean, I mean, everybody wanted to ride my new motorcycle. Like, let's go ride, yeah! And I got to drive back and say, yeah, here's the king. King Daddy showed up today. I got my mini traffic. <laughs> Woo! And then I know my mom's here. I know she's here. She had the nerve. Her and my dad had the nerve to buy my sister a mini trail seven. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I wasn't a king anymore. Man, everybody wanted to come over and, matter of fact, let me tell you about this. I went over to my mom's house, my mom and dad, they live right next to me. I went over there Monday night, no, Tuesday night. We looked through 10,000 pictures. Because I was going to show you a picture of me on my motorcycle. 10,000 pictures. I found three. And they were all of my sister on my motorcycle. That was wrong. What was worse, my neighbor came over and said, you know what, I was first friend. I'm like, why does anybody want to be with my sister? I mean, I got something better than her. She ain't got nothing. I mean, I was frustrated. Then my cousin had the nerve to come and say, you know what, it's like this. It's like this, cousin. It's like she's the Fonz and you're Ricky Cunningham. <laughs> Ricky Cunningham. Some of y'all know. I know some of you younger people have no idea what I'm talking about. I never had, it took me three years of counseling to get over that. <laughs> Comparison. Man, I'm telling you, that was hard. So you know, I mean, it's been a while. I mean, does anybody here know who the Fonz is? I'm just curious. Yes. Okay, I just know. I know it goes way before some of that. Look what it is. It was envy. I was envious, and tell me, I hope that that's okay. I told you that. Told that story. Yes. <laughs> Look what James chapter three says. James chapter three, verse fourteen. It says, "If you harbor bitter, bitter envy, right? So you're comparing yourself." To other people, and you other people, and you're becoming very envious of it. Very envious. You're mad. You're frustrated. You, 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 you're, you're looking at their life, and you're mad about it. And envy sits in. Here's what the Bible. If you harbor envy, bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven. But, earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil practice. Even one of the top ten commandments is what? Thou shalt not. not what? Thou shalt not come. So here's the problem. And we have to be careful. You may not be one of those that look at other things, but you may have this problem. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You may need to take a break from social media. Turn it off. I know that's going to be tough on some of y'all, but you may need to just turn it off. Take a break from it. How many can do that? Man, I can do it. I don't have a problem. Man, I, can, I don't even want, some days I don't even want to look at it. I don't even want to look at Facebook. I just don't look at it, right? 
If it's bothering you that much, look up here. I'm going to be honest with you. If it's bothering you, you need to turn it off. Take a break from it. Number two, here's another thing you ought to do. Man, if you've got somebody on there you're watching and you're envious and it's messing with your head, you better unfollow them. Look up here. I'm trying to tell you how you're going to get past it. Because you allow envy to step into your heart. And man, because envy has said in, you've got an issue. You've got an issue that the Bible says is evil. Right. You're comparing yourself with other people, and then you become very envious, and now that's leads to you having evil in your life, and you've got to get it out. You may need to just turn it off. You may need to unfollow it. Here's something that I've been trying to do. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to be transparent. Is it hot in here? I'm just sweating. Yes, Where's the air conditioning guy? There he goes. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's what I've learned to do. I've learned to try my best to celebrate the accomplishments of other people. Yes. See, look at it. Here's what you need to do. Let me tell you what I I had this problem when I first started preaching. I did. I'm gonna, is it okay if I just be I'm gonna be is it okay to be honest and be not be honest but be transparent? Okay, here you go. I may get fired for this, but that's okay. I've been here 21 years, I can find another place to preach. Okay, here we go. When I first started the ministry, we'd get these little papers, and they would li they'd list the top ten churches, right? right? And it was almost like, man, I'm only number four this week. If I can get two more people, I'll get up to number four, three. If I get five more people. And I had in my mind this sort of thing where I had to keep getting people so I could get to the top. That's wrong. Are oh, you listening to me? We don't need to be at the top just because we got people in the church. I'd rather be a church at the end that says, you know what, you baptized this many people. And let me tell you what, I feel like as a church we have accomplished the things that we need to accomplish. I don't care if we're the biggest church. I don't care if we're the smallest church. But I had to get that out of my heart. Matter of fact, some of you that were at the old church, you may have realized I took that little, we had a little thing that was on the wall, y'all remember this? And it told how many people were there every week. Man, that's the first thing I took down. Y'all don't even know how it went down. Y'all thought, where did that go? I'm like, I don't know, where did it go? <laughs> I had to take it down because the devil was in my head. And it's not good. But I'm telling you, I believe if you can get some of that junk out of your head, maybe the reason God's not blessing your life is because you're so envious of what other people are doing and you need to celebrate it. Try that. It will free your soul. Man, I, I see another church daily. Man, they'll put something like they had five baptisms. Man, I'll taste, I'll taste the preacher right there. Man, like I am so good job. Praise the Lord. That means five more people in the kingdom of God. Come on. Are y'all here today? Woo, I don't know about you, but I'm having fun today. We're almost done. I'm getting there. But you need to realize you ought to celebrate what's happening around you. Look at it, people and comparing yourself. Celebrate what they've done. Man, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's freedom. It releases life. Like, and I believe God blesses your life. You can get that junk out of your life, you'll be amazed at what God can do. Number two, right? So one thing about we gotta kill the comparisons. With God's help, we gotta compute, kill the comparisons. And the last thing is this. Through Christ. I think we can cultivate the gratitude. Proverbs 15, 15 says this. For the despondent every day brings trouble. But the happy heart, life is a continual feast. A happy heart sees the blessings of a day. Amen? Listen to me. I, ha I have a... I forget the camera. <sighs> okay. I know a guy that I'm telling you what, he cannot see the goodness of a day. I tell you what, the thing I miss the most about Brother Carter, I tell you what. Every time I say, hey, Brother Carter, how's it going? What would he say? Or how's the day going? Every day is a good day. Some days are better than others. Every day, I, I say it all the time, it makes that guy work so mad. Oh, you don't know every day. I mean, every day is a good day. But some days are just better than others. Every day is a good day. Right? I'm like, brother, for a while, I'm like, brother, come on, man. 
I saw him one day and he's like, hey, Brother Connor, how's it every day is a good day? I'm like, oh, it don't sound like it's got a good day. You're all pumped. Like, every day is a good day. Let me tell you what, I still wish he was alive today because I just want to hear that sometimes. Every day is a good day. The happy heart sees the good day. Let me tell you, there's good stuff happening all around you. You, you pick what you want to see. Some of y'all are only seeing the clouds, but you don't see the rays of sunshine coming through. You realize that, whoa, it may be a bad day, but praise the Lord, it's going to get better because I got God on my side. I am content where I am because I know without a fact that this is just a day. And it may not be the best day, but it's a good day. I could be in another place. I could be in another place in my life, but I am where I am by the grace of God. He's brought me to the places where I am in life. Here's what Ecclesiastes 6 and 9 says. Enjoy what you have. Enjoy what you have, brethren. Desire what you don't have. Right? Quit looking at what other people have. Man, you ought to look at your house. You look at other, well, I wish I had their house. You ought to look at your house and say, thank God I got plumbing. Amen. Woo! I know when it gets cold, it freezes up. But man, I'm telling you what, I like that plumbing. You know, half, the world, half of our world doesn't have it. Look up there. Half the people in this world do not have plumbing. Next time you flush that commode, you ought to say, Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> it ain't staying here, it's going somewhere else. Can I get an amen? amen. Matter of fact, I got to tell you something. I got in a little bit envious last night. <coughs> Go pray for me. I went up, my cousin invited my mom and dad over to eat, and by default were their drivers. So we got to go. His name is Ren Terry. His dad's name is Jimbo Terry. We went to their house to eat fish last night. It was good. I wish y'all could have been there. Don't get envious, I'm just saying. So I go in their house, right, and I need to go to the restroom, right? I walk in the restroom, and the light was coming through the window. Just enough where I didn't have to turn the light. Already. I walked over to the toilet and when I got there, boom, the toilet lit up. Dude, I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. How many have seen this before? Dude, you need to get you one of them. I am envious. I'm like, I want one of these. I mean, you can you imagine in the middle of the night, you ain't got to turn the light on, you just woke up, boom, the light goes on, you there. I know I shouldn't say that, but it is kind of funny. See how you're working your heart? I knew I was preaching this today. I'm like, Lord, I've got to work on this even now. I'm getting all in this. Man, I'm telling you, if you could get the attitude that looking around you and saying, wow, look what God has given me. Man, that other song that I love when Cassie sings is The Goodness of God. I know why it's one of the most popular songs in our country now is because, man, the goodness of God is amazing. But think about what God has done for each and every one of us. we got to believe that God is working for the good of those things in our life. We need to quit looking at what other people have and start looking at what God has given us and be good. That's what we mess up. We're a crazy country right now. When we can look around and see other people and get envious about what they have when God has blessed you so greatly. I'm telling you, we as a country, we as Americans don't realize just how good we got it. When I was talking about the car a while ago, most people in our world don't even have a car. Good high percentage of them. They don't have a car to get in every day. Most of them don't have electricity. Most of them don't have money. Half the people in the world don't have that. More than half, but more than more than that, doesn't have electricity. And here we are sitting in a, a church today with air conditioning, and, like, and it's working now. I can feel it. <laughs> Amen. So here's the thing. I'm challenging you today to find that contentment that God can give you. Think about all the things that God is doing. Kill the comparison. Cultivate the gratitude in the heart. And we need, we need to celebrate the blessings of others and rejoice when they rejoice. We need to cultivate the gratitude and worship our God because He is worthy of praise. Because 
We have learned the secret of being content in every situation. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. I'm going to ask you to stand as we go to the Lord. I don't know who, can somebody come up to the, and do a song of invitation for it? Send you a Bow your heads, let's pray. Dear Father, we do thank you for the privilege that we have today to be in your, your church. Be a part of this congregation, Lord, to see the things that your word has to say to us. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of speaking today. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of all the wonderful things you do in our life. Lord, we do sometimes struggle with discontentment. We do. We look at what other people have and we look at our own life. We see their highlight reels and when we get jealous because we look at our own life. But behind the scenes, we don't, we don't see how you're blessed us because we're so consumed with what other people do. <coughs> so it help us to learn to be content. Lord, knowing that no matter what we're going through, well, we can do anything. Because you're with us and it's really good. When nobody looking around, I've got to ask you a question. And maybe God has spoken to you like He's spoken to me today. Maybe God has touched your heart. Maybe there's certain corners of your heart that needs to needs a little bit of help today. Maybe there's some struggles that you're having. Maybe you need to say, Lord, I have not. I have not looked at the blessings in my own life because I've been too busy looking at other lives. Now I've got this little bit of envy toward a friend of mine, toward this, this sister of mine, this brother of mine. I've got this discontentment about these other family members. And now I'm not, my life is just not right. I feel this envy in me and it's just tearing me apart. With nobody looking around, would you raise your hand? We're going to pray for you today. I'm, I'm not here with you. I'm, I want to pray. Go ahead. Be here today and then God has spoken to you. He's moved. He's touched your heart. Would you raise your hand? I want, I want to see. All right, let me, let me pray. Dear Father, we do want to lift up each and every person that's here today. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that raise their hands and those that may not have, but they're still dealing with things. Lord, help us to realize that, God, Lord, through you, man, we can, we can be content in, in every situation, no matter what it is. You use Paul to tell us the secret, Lord, to be in happy in whatever situation we're in. Lord, help us to be content with that, knowing that in you we can do it. We'll rise above it. You'll put us where we need to be. And Lord, I, 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 I pray you'd be with each one, Lord, as they, work their, 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 as they work through that particular issue in their life. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Lord, we're all excited that we're about to do a baptism. Lord, uh, it's what, what we the one, the one number that we love more than anything else. Lord, it's the number that we know that people are, are, are seeing some things in their life. They're making a statement. They're going down one way, coming up another. It's a public statement about their salvation. So, God, we thank you for times like this. We just pray this in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you, just stay standing for one, stand for one second. I, uh, we want to do it in the morning. Some of y'all know Sean Gordon. He had a heart attack. He's at the hospital. And... Uh, they're doing some test on him, and uh, Camry's going to come down, and we're going to annoy her for Sean. Some of y'all that know him, he, but he used to come here pretty regular. So if you want to come and gather, we would, we would love that. We're going to lift him up. Dear Father, we do want to come to you right now. We do want to lift up Sean to you, Lord. Uh, we do pray you go into the room wherever he's at today, whatever hospital, whatever they're trying to do to figure out how to get everything back to uh, stable again. Or is it place these stents in the areas that need to be placed forward? We pray you guide these doctors' hands. Lord, we're praying for complete healing. Lord, let me thank you for that. Lord, we thank you that we have a God that, Lord, you can heal, you can use other people, but Lord, to do the, the actual procedure, but at the end, Lord, we know that you do the healing, so we do lift up Sean and pray you do with those that are right there beside him as he walks through this situation. But we thank you in advance, and we believe that, that Lord, we're going to bring that healing to him. 
Well, just help them to see that you're there in that room, and then only do what I do with you, do is how you just in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Have a seat. We're going to sing a song.